In today's video, I'm gonna talk about some weird and wacky Marvel collaboration toys. Thanks to the MCU, Marvel is one of the biggest franchises in the world, and as a result, they've had many collaborations with many different toy brands. I wanted to go back a little bit to before or the beginning of the MCU, and I have a couple reasons for this. The first is that these are just the toys that I was interested in as a kid, so I hold nostalgia for them and want to introduce them to a new audience or audiences that also remember them like I do. 95% of the comments I get on my videos are people saying, oh my god, I totally forgot about this toy line, thank you for reminding me. So maybe we can do that today. And B, they were just willing to do stuff back in the day, like they were willing to try anything. Without further ado, let's get into our list. But wait, what's good internet? It's your boy Jake here, dumb as ever. And I just needed to remind you to like and subscribe because as always we're dealing with the Space Jam, the new legacy villain Algae Rhythm, plotting to take us down. Also, if you really like the channel, you really like my videos, and you want to help me out some other way than just watching, liking, and subscribing, you can join my channel memberships for 99 cents a month, and with that membership, you gain access to an exclusive Discord only for channel members, and you get monthly mini-podcasts. Okay, now we can actually start the video. Lego. Now, Lego in recent years has done so much Marvel stuff. I mean, probably even more than recent years. I don't really keep up with Lego like that. But when I was a kid, we had the Raimi Spider-Man movie Lego sets. Both Spider-Man 1 and 2 got Lego sets. For Spider-Man 3, they went with Mega Bloks for some reason, but honestly, those Spider-Man figures were goaded with the sauce, and a lot of people use those Spider-Man Mega Bloks figures for their Lego animations. I mean, back in the day they did anyway, I don't know about now. But for this video, we're only gonna focus on the Lego ones, because those are what I played with. I never actually had any of the Spider-Man Mega Bloks stuff. And I'm not going to talk about every set, I'm just going to talk about a few select ones that I think are pretty cool or unique, or are tied to my memory in some way. Starting in 2002, Spider-Man sets were released as a subline for the LEGO Studios theme. And as I'm doing the research, I'm coming to realize that I'm pretty sure I had these LEGO Studio sets more than the other actually official Spider-Man first movie sets because I distinctly remember this criminal and the Steven Spielberg-style director Lego minifigure. And I remember having them and having that set and just wondering to myself as a kid, like, what does this mean? <laughs> I was five or six, so I probably couldn't process what the intention of the Lego figures was. I was just like, ooh, Spider-Man. And speaking of Ooh Spider-Man, oh my god, this original Spider-Man Lego minifigure is so sick. It perfectly captures that first movie look, and the silver webbing and stuff just makes the figure pop. It was always one of my favorite Lego minifigures. This is also the era where they're still doing the yellow skin tone for even movie characters, so it's pretty interesting to see Peter and MJ and Norman Osborn all having the yellow skin tone. There was also a Green Goblin figure. Now, this Green Goblin figure didn't have any printing on it, so it was just a solid piece of green plastic, which I guess looks pretty weird today, but for me as a kid, it didn't really bother me because I had a werewolf Lego minifigure that I really liked, and his werewolf head did not have any printing on it, so I was just like, okay, that's what they're like. <laughs> that's, how it, that's how it works. No printing. But a year later, in 2003, Lego did expand the line into its own theme. This included a bunch of great scenes like the car chase and the bridge battle, but the one I distinctly remember having is the origin set. This set is really interesting because it's vignettes of two different scenes in the movie. The first being the scene where Peter gets bit by the spider. It features Mary Jane Watson and Lego Peter Parker and some cool translucent spiders that look like little gummies. Mm, I might eat them. That's kind of cool, I like it, but the most interesting part of the set to me is Norman Osborn's lab. You know that hilarious scene where he becomes the Green Goblin in that weird science chamber? He goes absolutely sicko mode and beats up his friend. <laughs> 
the Lego set has a fun play feature where you can spin around that chamber and normal Norman Osborn goes away and the Green Goblin appears. Not quite how it worked in the movie, but eh, I'll give it a pass. In 2004, they did another theme for Spider-Man 2. This featured a variety of sets like the train scene, the scene where Doc Ock gets blown up, and the final warehouse battle. The warehouse battle is actually the only set that I had as a kid, but honestly, it's the only one you needed. It came with Doc Ock, who, by the way, is one of the coolest minifigures. He had a bunch of little segmented pieces that you could put together, and his arms moved so fluidly. It was like handling an SA monster arts tail or something and if you had more pieces you couldn't make them super long it was so cool such a good minifigure looking back at it now i remember this set being so much bigger and cooler than it actually is like don't get me wrong it's pretty cool but it's basically just a warehouse with a thing in it and that's all there's not even like some set dressing or anything like that the boat feels random why do we need a boat here to be honest overall these lego spider-man sets are not even that weird I just wanted to talk about them for the video. So let's get into the real weird stuff. Mighty Beans. Created by Moose Enterprises in Australia, Mighty Beans is a <laughs> exceedingly strange toy line. It was a collectible line of figures that were bean-shaped and had little ball bearings inside them so they would flip around. As far as I can tell, there was no clear game you were meant to play with them. They had little race tracks you could send the Mighty Beans down and they in the commercial, they show kids playing some sort of bowling type game. But I think the main draw was actually that they were blind bags, which obviously is a huge toy industry nowadays, but back then it was kind of new. Not saying Mighty Beans created blind bags, but it was not as prevalent at the time. There's actually three eras of Mighty Beans. The first is from 2002, and that series lasted until 2006. In 2010, they relaunched Mighty Beans, and that's where our next subject is coming from. In 2018, they relaunched Mighty Beans again, and they did Fortnite Mighty Beans, but that's for another video and another time. Yeah, in 2010, Marvel did a collaboration with the Mighty Beans. 75 new Mighty Beans designs based on Marvel characters. The packaging featured the Marvel Universe brand, which was kind of the all-encompassing Marvel brand at the time. Marvel Universe was the name of the three and three-quarter inch action figure line that Hasbro was pretty much exclusively doing until they restarted Marvel Legends. The commercial for these Marvel Mighty Beans is actually really strange. I watch pretty much every Mighty Beans commercial and this seems to be the only one that functions as an infomercial as well, meaning they're trying to get you to buy Marvel Mighty Beans from the television ad and promise you five golden Mighty Beans if you do. I've never understood the golden chase figures. Why would I want a golden Spider-Man. Like, what does that mean to me <laughs> as a fan? Just like all the other Mighty Bean series, these guys came in five packs with one bean showing and four secret beans. The old packaging is actually really fun and clever because it features a little ramp that you can send the bean down, sort of see how they work. I did just want to highlight some of the Mighty Beans on this list. Obviously, we got our classics like Spider-Man, Hulk, Captain America, Wolverine. Those were the main guys back in the day. There's a bunch of Spider-Man villains on here, including Anti-Venom, which is an interesting pool. We have a Galactus Bean, which is funny because he's exactly the same size, as well as a Sentinel Bean. The Venom design here kind of looks like Mac Gargan Venom for my Spider-Man heads. There's also a bunch of scroll designs, so I'm kind of assuming that's supposed to tie in with Secret Invasion. This is kind of the Secret Invasion era, so it's probably a reference to that. Mighty Beans, I love them. It's a great concept. It's a silly collectible. It's funny that they keep coming back, much like William Afton. I always come back. And I'm looking forward to the next Mighty Bean series to hit America. Transformers crossovers. That's right, my Transformers fans. Of course, I haven't forgotten about you. In 2008, Hasbro said, what if we made our two most popular toy lines kiss? They also did a Star Wars Transformers crossover line, but that's for another time. Transformers crossovers Marvel featured a bunch of characters. Obviously, we got our Spider-Mans, we got our Captain Americas, and we got a whole hell of a 
a lot of Iron Man. There's an Iron Man that turns into a car. There's an Iron Man that turns into a jet. There's an Iron Man that turns into a jeep. There's an Iron Man that turns into another type of jet. I mean, I do have to admit that Iron Man makes the most sense for this toy line as someone who would actually design giant robots that turn into vehicles. So the Transformers crossover stuff is a little weird because they refuse to act as if these characters are new characters at all. They're all just Iron Man, Spider-Man, Hulk. Like, they're not Transformers. They're just robot representations of these superheroes. If you don't really understand what I mean, look no further than the current collaboration series Transformers has been doing for a few years now. They actually did a Marvel crossover recently, if you'll remember, Ultimate X-Pants. And while Ultimate X-Pants features elements from different X-Men characters like Cyclops' goggles, Psylocke's powers, Wolverine's claws. He is his own character and he has his own name. Same thing with the newly revealed Party Wallop for the TMT collaboration. He can be the Turtles, but he can also be Party Wallop, which is its own character. I know this kind of sounds like nitpicking, but it's just weird to me to have this concept but not really utilize it fully to its own potential, which they obviously did years later down the line, but looking back now, kind of strange. Okay, let's go back to the toy line. I'm not going to talk about every figure, but I am going to talk about the most interesting ones to me. Naturally, there are a bunch of Spider-Man toys. He has almost as many as Iron Man. Some of my faves are the motorcycle, which is his original design that came out. That just makes sense for Spider-Man to be a motorcycle to me. I like the Symbio version better, but the first one that came out is pretty cool. He also has a sports car alt mode, which I actually like a lot. <laughs> his robot mode looks surprisingly cohesive, and the vehicle mode actually looks pretty cool. Again, the Symbio version is cooler, but we don't gotta talk about that. There's also an Iron Man and Spider-Man 2-pack where they can transform and combine in vehicle mode and kind of combine in robot mode. It's kind of like a Macross-style <laughs> jet with the legs. There is also a Thor figure that came out, so you can have your Marvel Avengers in Transformers form, of course. And I also really like the Venom figure that came out. He turns into a muscle car, which just works perfectly for Venom. The Carnage repaint is good, too. Some characters that I was kind of surprised got figures were Human Torch and Ghost Rider. I guess it makes sense because around that time they did have movies coming out, the Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider stuff and that original Fantastic Four stuff, so kind of makes sense now that I think about it, but at first I was surprised. The Ghost Rider is obviously a home run, like he turns into a motorcycle, it's sick, it makes perfect sense. The good thing about these guys is they seem pretty solid, which is not something I could say about the Star Wars crossover stuff. Marvel crossovers. Did you have any as a kid? Did you like them? Did you love them? Did you hate them? Let me know in the comments. I'm always interested to hear about what you guys had when you were younger. Bakugan! Alright, y'all wanted me to talk more Bakugan. I got a lot of comments last video saying, talk Bakugan, talk Bakugan! Alright, here's some Bakugan, but they're weird! In 2011, Bakugan was on its last legs, essentially. Mectanium Surge was a... <laughs> <laughs> not well regarded by the fans and not selling well. Kind of makes sense. Most toy lines only run for about three years. Bakugan had run four or five, I guess, at this point. Seemed like Spin Master was maybe getting a little desperate or this just happened coincidentally at the same time. But they announced a partnership with Marvel to produce some Marvel-style Bakugan toys. And by Marvel-style, I mean Spider-Man is a Bakugan now. <laughs> yeah, Spin Master released five new little freaks into the market in two packs with other older Bakugan. These Bakugan were actually retools of other Bakugan, so they weren't even their own unique mold, which I feel like is kind of exceedingly lazy for a crossover, but hey, it is what it is. The lineup is as you would expect. Spider-Man, Iron Man, Captain America, Wolverine, and the Red Skull. Red Skull is kind of a surprising pull. Maybe it's because there was a Captain America movie out around the same time these came out. But you can finally own a Bakugan that has committed war crimes! Hooray! I'm not gonna lie, I actually like these guys a lot. I think they're really weird and really cool. Red Skull is easily my least favorite, just because he kind of looks like a guy. I like the weird gangly proportions that Bakugans have when they're trying to convey a figure. That's always been the most interesting part to me, is 
them trying to turn this ball into a little monster and and really show that to the consumer. And of course, this was the original Bakugan series, so everything was a little bit more simple, but I kind of dig that, to be honest. The, the Ultra Bakugan of the rebooted series were a little over the top sometimes. Shout out to my unreleased Transformers video. There's actually some unreleased Bakugan, namely the Hulk and Thor. I actually didn't know the Hulk was canceled when I made the thumbnail, so that's why the Hulk is in the thumbnail. So I just want to show these guys off to y'all in case you never saw them. They're pretty cool. I recommend Jet Kuso's video on them because it's pretty comprehensive and gives some good info. Shout out Jet Kuso. Great YouTuber. All right, it's the end of the line for you and I. Another great video in the can, right? <laughs> Thanks as always for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Also, if you'd like to support me more, there's always channel memberships with that exclusive Discord and mini podcasts that you can watch. All right, y'all. I'm going to go get a little Caesar's pizza and chill the heck out. See you next time.